Hi everybody, hope you are all doing well. I'm on camera today. Um, I've turned it around so you can get a wee look at me. Hello. So um, I hope you are all doing well. Welcome back to the channel. I'm taking you out on a wee walk here with me again for a wee chat. I'm going to have a chat about disrespectful people and I'll take you along on the walk. Just have to watch my step here because it's quite woody. I easily fall flat on my face. When you're dealing with disrespectful people, it can be really difficult. You know, I've went through this up here like this in my past and um, it can be really hard to navigate without some skills. Um, oh, duck my head in under the fir tree here. But um, no matter like how difficult a person is and no matter what the situation is, I would say the number one thing that I've learned from dealing with all sorts of difficult people, like, I mean, and I've dealt with a range of them, right from high end to very minor. And one of the secrets is to detach emotionally. And I will uh, go through how you can do that and how you can learn to do that. And it's a great skill to learn and it'll save you a lot of hassle and a lot of grief in the future when you start to learn to uh, emotionally detach from these people. It's so like the ground is so undulated here. But um, so like if you're speaking to someone and um, they're giving you advice or they're blaming you, maybe attacking you for some reason, you have to realize that majority of that of the time when that's happening is it's it's about them not about you um when people are hurt or they have old wounds and they've not healed what happens is it manifests outwards from their inside onto you sometimes people are aware of it but a lot of the time they're not and this is what happens. And you're sort of sitting there or standing there going, what has just happened to me? And this is why you need to learn. You need to learn the skill of why people are doing these things. And then why you need to detach from it. Go on, Luna, good girl. Um, and once you start to understand what's really happening, It'll give you more confidence. You won't take it personally and you'll be able to detach emotionally from it. And you'll be able to do it in any situation that you're encountering, no matter who it's with, a close family member, a friend, a workmate, someone you meet on the street, someone you're out in your car, it won't make any difference. You know, it'll be difficult at first to apply it because you're still learning something new. And we're all just so used to reacting to things. You know, sometimes it just happens, you react before you know it, you're in an argument with somebody or you're trying to defend yourself. So it'll take a wee time, a bit of time, but um, you'll get used to it and the more you do it, your brain will learn a new pattern and then you'll just start to do it automatically. You'll stop and you'll think, you know. So um, one of the first things I would say is to start to learn how to do it, sorry my eyes are watering, the first thing you have to become aware of is starting to listen. So when someone kicks off at you, instead of getting emotionally pulled into the situation, you want to stop and think, what are they saying? Like really listen to what they're saying because a lot of the time what they're saying is not even related to maybe what you had been talking about. And that will give you that moment to just pause and take withdraw your emotion from the situation. So really listen to what they're saying. And then a good tip is, so say someone's saying to you, you're, oh, you're always doing this, or you're always doing that. One sentence answers are a great way to cut that off. Now, do it in a respectful way. Don't do it in a way that's going to cause more conflict, you know, like an ego type way. 
So if someone says, you're always doing this, or you're always doing that, or they're trying to blame you for something, just say something like, I'm sorry you feel that way. Okay, so whatever sentence you decide to pick, stick with that. So if then they try to pull you in again by saying something else, or trying to emotionally get you involved, where you're going to emotionally react, just repeat it again and say, I'm sorry you feel that way. You can use whatever phrase you want, but keep to the phrase, okay? And then it gives you that breathing space to think about what's happening, to detach yourself. You can also say things like, um, I'm sorry, but I don't agree with you. And if they say something like, well, why don't you agree with me? And they're still trying to pull you in. Don't react. No matter how much you want to, no matter how much your ego is trying to tell you because of this, 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 and this, don't. Just say nothing. Or you can even then say the phrase, I'm sorry you feel that way. Or, you know, you can make up your own phrase, whatever feels comfortable to you, whatever sort of language or lingo you use in your part of the world. You know, um, you can say it, um, but just listen, listen to what they're saying. And a lot of the time you'll find that people are just rambling and they're not actually really making sense. And what tends to happen is when we get emotionally drawn in, we're picking up on keywords that we're reacting to. But if you really start to listen, what you'll find is a lot of the time they're not making sense at all. You know, so now if you're confident to be able to say something like, no, I don't agree with you and you have a talk about it and you say, I can see Lynn in the background there, um, you can say, um, depending on the person, you know how well you know them and stuff. If you're confident enough, you can say, look, I'm not happy with this behavior and I want it to stop but still not get drawn in, just be confident about it and cut it off as that. Don't get into a full-blown discussion or behavior. Let that sit with them. And if they said something to you like, well, let's discuss it, you can say, I would rather wait until everyone's calmed down and then we can discuss it properly, you know? So don't get drawn into the conversation there and then when things, you know, emotions are running high keep it very simple keep it very clear and keep it very straightforward okay now what's very important is if we're out and about sometimes what can happen is something these things just happen you know they take us off guard you might meet somebody on a bus and they've had a bad mood and they tell you where to go or whatever but in that instant i would just let that go don't get involved, don't look at them, don't nothing. Just walk on and let that go. If you don't know that person, you know, just let it go. It's not even worth getting into a hassle. If this is someone you know and this is always happening, like a friend or something, you know, you're going to have to learn to start to set boundaries with those people. You know, and sometimes all it takes is for us to distance ourselves a bit, you know, and that person might get the message as to, you know, they might phone you up and say, God, I haven't seen you for a while. You know, is there anything wrong? And that is your chance then to be able to talk and say in a calm manner, I'm really sorry, but the last few times that we've been out together, your behavior has stressed me out and I felt I needed a bit of space. Don't accuse them of anything. You know, don't... Um, don't get into any big drama with them. Just say it confidently and then see where it goes. If they kick off, then you just do the same thing and you start to distance yourself again. If they're open to the discussion, keep the discussion sort of very stoic. Don't get emotionally involved in it. Have a conversation. Maybe not do it right there and then. You could maybe meet up so it gives you a chance to prepare hair gives you a chance to know what you're going to say how you're going to react and if you need to get out of the situation a kind of an escape plan you know if you need to escape I've had to do that a few times so that you're not um 
you know, you're not stuck in a situation that you don't want to be in, okay? So, um, now, also I would say is if you do meet up with someone and you are, you have maybe distanced yourself for a while and you're going to talk to them, be confident. Don't be afraid to speak your mind. Now, if you need to practice it, practice it. Practice it five, fifty times before you go out so that it's in your mind what you're going to say, okay? Now, if that person gets emotionally triggered again and you know that you're not the cause and you know you've done nothing wrong, then you know you're going to have to really set strict boundaries with that person. And you can tell them that you would rather take a bit of time and a bit of space and then just let that sit with them and see how it evolves. You know, and if they start to phone you, start to text you, blah, 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 just ignore it. Just ignore it. Make the decision if you're going to set the boundaries. Set a hard boundary for whatever amount of time you want to do it. So it gives you enough space so you can reset yourself. Okay. So, um, and then maybe, see, depending on how it's going, you can go back and talk to that individual. But it could come to a stage where you might have to walk away from that person but only you will know that you know and if it's really bad if the situation is really bad and it's causing you a lot of stress it's causing you a lot of harm then if you need to walk away walk away you can try all these other things first okay now the most important thing is that you just don't get pulled in emotionally it's i can't really explain it any better than that it's when our emotions are triggered and we get pulled in that we end up in these arguments we end up feeling hurt we end up feeling you know betrayed all of this sort of thing so if you can keep the emotions out and sort of look at it like you know the way you would if you're in the workplace and you have to act professionally and that person stand in front of you that you can't stand, but you know you can't say exactly what's on your mind. You know, do it that way. But see it for what it is. See it that it's emotional gameplay. Some people intentionally want to pull you in so that you they can blame you. They can blame you for whatever. You know, so that's why you don't want to do it. You want to um, stay out of that and create as less sort of drama for yourself as possible. So that's my advice on the situation. It's just practice. You know, if you've been reacting emotionally in the past to people, um, it's going to take a wee while. You mightn't get it right straight away. You might get pulled in. Don't feel bad about it. Don't be hard on yourself. Just practice and do it again, you know, over and over. And your brain will then start to create a new pattern and you'll be able to deal with it and you'll get better and better at it, you know. Like, I mean, I remember years ago, I used to go to the park with, with my dog and so many people in the park used to, they, w they wouldn't have trained their dogs. The dogs would be attacking my dogs, you know, um, all sorts of crazy things going on and meet people. And I would get emotionally involved and I'd end up, you know, telling someone to F off or getting into arguments with people and stuff like that. And, and I just thought, what the hell am I doing this for? This is so stupid, you know? And I started to learn learn how to um, emotionally disengage and realize that yeah, as much as I would like people to, you know, make sure that their dogs are, you know, properly behaved and all the rest of it, it's not gonna happen. People are gonna do what they're gonna do and you've got no control over it, but you do have control over yourself. So that's what you need to start doing, getting control of your emotions and don't let anyone trigger you. And you'll go through life and you'll be as happy as Larry. And no matter what someone says to you, you will not give a damn. All right. Until next time, take care.